have today is to tell you a story. Down in the valley over here is a meditation garden. When you're done today, just peek over the edge. It has four rooms. And when we were building it, a family came to us, and they just lost their son, Andrew Wallace, school teacher from Oshkosh. And they wanted to do something. And they looked at everything, and I told them what it was going to cost. And they said, well, we'll be back. And inside my head, I said, sure. Two weeks later, they came back, and they brought Andrew's widow, Angela. She was 19 years old. And they decided to purchase the Ascension of the Doves. That next spring, February 28th to be exact, the fabricator called me and he says, Kirk, I got a bald spot in this thing. We got to add another bird. And I says, well, first of all, they're not birds. And secondly, you and I don't do that. The sculptress will do that. So I called the sculptress and she says, oh, good idea. Seven is the number of completion. We should do that. So I called Andrew's mother, Janie, and I said, Janie, here's what happened. And she started to cry, and then she started to sob. And I said, you know, we don't have to do this. this. You guys purchased it. We don't have to change it. And she says, Kirk, just shut up. <laughs> I'm really good at this. And, just, and so I listened and waited for her to calm down. And she says to me, you forgot. You forgot what happened. And I says, I guess, tell me what happened. And she says, when we buried Andrew, really, we released seven doves. And she says, it's an omen, and we got to do it. I says, fine. Two years ago, she was here, and she was wearing a little leather band around her neck, like a shoestring, a rawhide shoestring, and had a thing on it. And I said, what's that about? And she says, the school asked me back, and every kid, when Andrew was there, took a piece of notebook paper, drew a picture of a boot, and wrote on it, we'll follow you anywhere, Andrew, and sign their names. She says, they gave me this necklace with a little boot on it. Isn't that cool? And I says, yeah, it is. She says, you want to hear the rest of the story? And I says, probably not. She says, well, you are. And she says, afterwards, she's walking down the hallway. And here's this little boy. And he's got it tied around his ankle. And she stopped him. And she said, what's that about? And he says, Andrew taught me how to tie my shoes. You and I touch people every day, and we have a choice on how we touch them. And today, you're touching deeply some person. Thank you for doing that. We're about healing here. Hello, my name is Cindy, and I'm a volunteer and the leader of the Legacy Stone Ceremony. On behalf of everyone who loves and cares about the high ground, I welcome you. Today is a very special day, not only for the individual being honored, but also for the people who have taken the time to do the detailed planning that brings us here today. There are many stories behind each and every one of these Legacy Stones. History is being made today. You are placing a stone for future generations who will come to the high ground. Family and friends will visit the high ground and remember this individual's accomplishments, and they will never be forgotten because of what you are doing here today. We have a ceremony we call the spreading and harvesting of the earth. If Wayne is here, come on up. To give you a little history about this, the high ground has a tradition which has been passed on since the first legacy stone ceremony began. In this file is the earth from the previous legacy stone ceremonies which has been saved. This is what forms a connection between all the stone ceremonies. We have asked Wayne Jackson, a veteran here today, to sprinkle the earth across where we are laying the stones today and harvest new earth for the next legacy stone ceremony. 